This video is being sponsored by Educative.io, which has a collection of well-written crafted courses for software developers, from Python to front-end to system design to scalability to Docker and whatnot. Learning at Educative is really powerful because they have all coding workspaces in the browser itself and also they offer Educative for Limited in which you pay only once for all the courses. They have annual and monthly plans and my audience gets a 10% additional discount on the 40% campaign they have for India. So you get a 46% discount on using the coupon Rachid and you can have the link in the description below. All right. Hey everyone, this is me Rachid. How's it going? Um, when I started with software engineering and when I started in doing, especially in system design, I have felt that talking about NoSQL versus SQL in a real interview is quite difficult and how to have those conversations, how to discuss the trade-offs is something in which I never had much confidence. Having spent around four and a half years in software engineering, I am very happy that in today's video, we will try to unwrap the mystery around both these relational versus document databases models. We'll try to look at both the things, look at the pros and cons of each. And I hope this gives you better confidence to deal with them, especially in interviews. So all the best. All right, so let's start with an example. Let's say you have a product in which you are showing the resume on the front end. So how would the backend for storing resume would look like? When you talk about relational data models, obviously you will have tables. And then if you apply normalization, which means that instead of storing the full region information over here, you are storing a region ID. And that will be a sim link to another table over here, or you can say a foreign key reference over here. And it will have the more details like Bangalore and N322 will be Hyderabad. Right. So this is what the relational side of things look like. You have a bunch of tables and they will be having foreign key references here and there. Similarly, for country ID, you are having 78, which is referring to India. And then industry ID is 23, which is referring to IT. Right. So you are having all these ref references, foreign keys and all those things. Also, a user will also be going to colleges and schools. So for that, there will be a many to many mapping. One user can have multiple education information and for one education institute, they can have multiple users who went there. So that will be a part of separate table. And then over here, 238, it will be referencing in this as a foreign key. So 238 is having two educations. One is for 231 and 232. What is the name? IIT Roorkee, DAV Public School, what was the start year, end year and so on, right? So these are how the things are looking at the relational side. And if we talk about um, the other data model, which is document data model, over there you will have something like JSON, right? Now for a resume kind of thing, JSON looks like more handy, right? Because over here information is so much distributed. To fetch something like resume, which is a self-containing document and probably you will never need a part of resume right you will fetch the complete information so you'll need to perform a lot of joins when you talk about the relational side but in case of document side it's one single document which is having all the information and it's much easier to write the application code in this way so this is an example of how things will look like in different data models for the same application and now you can say that now you can argue about the pros and cons. So at this time, I have said that there will be too many joints in the relational side, which looks like a con. And then resume is self-containing. So obviously JSON will look much more appealing at this point. And also document has document data model has better locality. Now, what is locality? It means that when you need some information, everything which is related is in the same locale or grouped together. So it's having better locality, whereas in relational things are distributed here and there. So at this point, it seems like document data model is more appealing as compared to relational, which is causing a lot of headaches because of too many joints and data is spread here and there. However, I also want you to consider a few other scenarios. Now think about this. If you talk about education, as I have said, there are many to many relationships. One user can go to multiple institutes and this institute can have multiple users, right? So if you talk about JSON, right, in that case, education can have obviously start and end date. This can be stored in the JSON. But if you start storing institution name as something like this, does this really make sense? Let's say there are hundred of students in the University of Queensland. 
so there will be 100 resumes of 100 people and then everyone will be having education section with their own start and end date and the institution name as this right so this is a bad idea why because let's say if you want to talk about an example where we also want to start showing more information about the institution when the when you're talking about the front end app normally linkedin is something which looks like this i am having my education section i'm having two institutes one is iit roorkee one is gb public school and i'm having their logos right i'm having their logos also if i click on this i get the home page so i also need to store the url in the institute and then i have much more information about uh, a short bio of the institute itself and then some headline right so we have a bunch of things that we can do as the app evolves at that point of time if you talk about the document data model now it was making sense that it was self-containing however if you just store a string it's not enough otherwise you will now also start storing logo then you will start storing headline bio and all those things and this will be something which you will repeat across 100 json files right 100 of documents will be having the same information which will take more space first of all and also think about the case in which you are facing a lot of typos so in some document models the university of queensland is something like this in some it's written in uppercase so it will be the university something like this right so it can lead to a lot of spelling mistakes also if you want to do some update in the name like probably if you were storing in lowercase now you want to store in uppercase or probably um, the place has changed the name has changed right because we are also having other information um, as you can see the region right right now it's Gurugaon or Bangalore now Gurugaon was renamed to Gurugram so if you have something like this would you go across all hundred and thousands of documents and do those renamings so that's why relational at that point of time looks better because you can use IDs which are foreign key references to the actual information and this is what normalization is all about so in the resume uh, row for one resume row you have the name user ID the bio and all those things but for regions for education ids for that you will simply have a reference and there will be separate tables for these entities which will have their names and then if you want to rename bangalore to something else bangaluru or something if you want to do those renamings you just do it in the entity table their id stays same and therefore all the references which were there stay same and now the front end when it's performing the join it will able to get the new name and a lot of documents we did not even have to worry about right so when you're talking about information which might change over time it's good enough in relational database that you can keep them as separate entities and have foreign key references to them so this is something uh, which as app grows you'll have different kind of um, scenarios now we can also talk about recommendations right even in recommendations if you see my profile i have recommendations from three people for example now i'm not just showing their name so if you are storing references in json or document data model you can probably do it something like this right references and then what was the text and what is the name and in the name itself they are storing that he is ceo of this or he is manager of that and something something so this is one way again this is probably not what uh, you would want to have when you're talking about professional apps at that point of time instead of that you would want uh, author id and what was the reference text so instead of name you will have some reference over here and there will be a separate document or separate table for the user profile and from there you can fetch their profile pictures or their bio because this can keep on changing right like if you are talking about this now let's say joey flores who gave you a reference or recommendation at this point he was co-founder and ceo of earbuds but let's say three years down the lane he is having some other company or basically these credentials might change over time and if that happens does this mean you go through all the documents in which joey has given a recommendation and do you change this so this is a lot of complication which is evolving right so even in document data models you will need reference ids and the thing is relational databases have been trained enough they have been well productionized enough to the extent that they have better support for joins and foreign key references lookups so this is how you can uh, talk about normal trade-offs when you're talking about any application and there will always be different things that you have to talk about and probably there are some applications in which such 
references or foreign key lookups do not make sense for example if you are talking about an app which is um which is in the back end it's storing the application logs and probably you want to figure out in a given range of time how many errors were there so these are some things which are not interlinked and it does not require foreign key lookups right you you do not require references in some apps and there are a lot of apps which do not actually require these interlinkings so at that point of time relational databases are an overkill and that's why document data models start becomes more appealing when your data is self containing and there are no more of um, foreign key references so there can be a lot of ways to actually see at it and there are a lot of different uh, blog posts also and open debates about um, which is best whether it's no sql or sql so there is a, this is a never ending debate and it all depends on how much you know how much your developers are skilled and whether your application is really making sense also things are evolving they say that uh, the relational databases are not having horizontal scalability and i'll just go through that once so they say that um, horizontal scaling is something which only comes with document data models right the no sql things but that's not true if you look at mysql official blog post um, let me show that so now mysql is also having horizontal scaling right so things are changing with time and i would say that um, relational databases are acquiring features from the no sql world and no sql databases are acquiring features from the relational world why because asset support is something they say that only comes in relational databases right but now if you will look at redis it is having an option in which you can obviously keep data in memory but also persist that to disk periodically right so no sql was inherently faster why because it was dropping a few words from asset few letters from asset were being dropped because of which the performance was better but obviously you were losing something right so for something like transactions and all those things relational databases were the way to go because they were having the support for that but now even no sql things are coming up with transactions and providing asset support right so redis i'm not saying that it provides complete asset support but what i'm trying to say is uh, if you talk about durability right which is durability or the d in asset stands for durability which is about um, if some data has been written then if you try to open the app next time it's still there right so generally if you talk about in memory databases if they have not persisted that information to disk and power failure occurs if you now open the app that information was lost but redis is having an optional feature in which you can start persisting the in memory data to disk so that the durability starts coming into picture so as i'm saying the world is changing time is changing and i believe um, the mix of no sql and sql is really something that's happening and if you talk about google spanner i mean google spanner it is a relational database but again um, it's also supporting horizontal scaling also as uh, another point i want to mention that migration to no sql is not worth it it's worth the hype but again if you talk about companies or organizations which were built on relational databases they are not directly migrating to no sql it might happen that certain apps or certain features in an organization make sense to use no sql and they are being written from scratch so you can obviously make a choice to go with relational or da document data model from the beginning but if you already have a working app for if example if you talk about google adwords if i'll open the wikipedia page google adwords now think about how many searches are happening in google it's a very data intensive application but it's using relational databases right so adwords is something which was initially implemented on top of mysql and it's not that if you start facing challenges in scalability then you dump mysql and you dump the relational side of things and then you just do a simple migration to no sql because everyone is saying that's more scalable it's not like that so that's not exactly true and that's not feasible why because doing a migration of a massive application is a too much investment uh, of your developers it's going to take too much time and also if your developers were trained on relational databases they might not even know a lot of hiccups and caveats that no sql databases come with so you are even dropping the quality of your service if you do such massive migrations which is not obviously possible the better way to look at it is actually figure out why you are facing the scalability issue and then work towards them 
So that's what exactly Google did. Instead of dumping MySQL and going to something like MongoDB, they actually developed their custom distributed relational database management system, which is Google F1 now. So this is what innovation is about and relational databases do provide that scalability if you if you happen to know how to bring out the performance because if you talk about relational databases they are having like i would just go into the history and tell you what a massively successful uh, database this is the data model in relational databases is very awesome and i'll just go through the history of this it started in 1970s relational data models are that old and they have dominated the software engineering world for over 30 years it's a long time there are many data models that came into picture but none of them was as strong and as easily adaptable as relational database models and we will look into it why okay so relational databases were originally for business data processing but they were able to serve diverse purposes like social networking e-commerce games a lot of requirements were easily adaptable in relational model and that's why they were a massive success the other beauty is they hide the implementation details behind a clean interface so in relational models you don't as an application developer you just need to use their apis to store data to disk you don't have to worry about how to store those bytes that's been or that's being taken care by relational models you can create indices you can optimize your queries and your queries will still say same if you are doing select star from some table where user id is this and if you create an index on user id then your performance is better and your query still stays the same right you don't have to do any more changes to bring out optimization that is being done behind the scenes by the uh, relational database model itself right these are query optimizers which are really beneficial for us now in 2010 that's where nosql started coming into picture and it's one of the latest attempt to overpower the relational databases and one of the preference for uh, nosql was because um, it was mo most of them are open sourced and they were preferred over commercial database products like oracle and also there was a frustration with schema restriction in relational databases and some applications which were having a lot of dynamic changing environment or probably where the data type is very heterogeneous in the sense that you do not have any control over uh, what exactly the data is going to look like at that point of time schema really hurts more than it helps and when you're talking about relational model just having that schema restrictions is a nightmare so obviously people realize that there are some applications in which schema restriction is not really needed and obviously uh, considering the horizontal scalability nosql started really gaining a lot of attention all right so another drawback that i also want to cover about the relational model is that a lot of uh, programming languages are based on object oriented programming in which if you're talking about this resume example so you will uh, eventually have classes for resumes you will have classes for education entities classes for industry uh, ids and all those things so you will have different classes and when you have to store them in the back end obviously there is some translation layer needed between the application classes and the database models so this was an awkward layer that came into picture which was not the case in document data models because even in your applications you are going to use json and you can directly push that to the back end and store it in the form of json so this translation translation layer is often uh, a headache and it can reduce the boilerplate using ORM which is object relation mappers but it's still something that we should be aware about another drawback of document data models is that they are not having good support for joins and relational is having better support for joins as I've said and also in document model if you will look okay it's making sense that it's self-containing but let's talk about a case in which you want a certain part of the document that you cannot do you will fetch the entire document or you can say that i want the third element of the array which is present in some xyz key right so you need some different access paths to fetch information which is not the case in relational you can very easily communicate in their query languages you can easily say that i want to select column x and column y from table this where and now you can also apply filters on rows so in that sense relational is easy to query i would say 
you can ask for a granular data and not have to worry about the access paths which you have to do in case of document models also as i've said the query optimizers they are really great if you create an index you get better performance and your query stays the same which is just think about the ease so you can if you are having scalability issues you can actually figure out what your query patterns are you can decide what your database model should look like you can create indexes and the best thing is your queries will still stay the same so it's very easy to use you can drive performance if you create indices correctly with giving it a lot of thought also we can compare relational and document models in based of their fault tolerance how they handle concurrencies but that i want to cover in a bit of later future videos at this point of time we dived into data models and we saw that schema flexibility better locality and less impedance is what is offered by the document data model however the relational is winning by providing better joins many to many relationships and many to one relationships so if your data is document based uh, something like resume with not of so much of advanced features like education profile institute profile and all those things so if that's not the case and if your data is self containing actually breaking that down into multiple tables will lead to complicated code so you should at that point of time use document models but if you are having many to many relationships then relational is really good because you have joins by application code they will make your application code more complex because you will be fetching the documents you will be finding their ids then you will be fetching another document so you are doing all that in code which is making your code more complex and also relational is having query optimizers so if you perform join in relational database versus if you are doing that in mongodb obviously mysql and the relational databases will win because their query optimizers are much more evolved but having said that if you are having highly interconnected data for something like uh, facebook friends at that point of time document model is very less appealing relational is better but graph data models it's again kind of in the no sql category something like new for j they become more uh, appealing and they are well designed for serving such purposes so yeah these are the different data models and an overview of how things look like what are the trade offs involved and i also want to go through few scenarios like what happen when you change schemas so it might happen that initially you were storing name and now as a business decision you want to split that into first name and last name so if you want to do that uh, in case of document data models like mongodb what you can do is your application code can handle it very easily in your application code when you fetch the user from the document you can check that if it's having user dot name and there is no user dot first name it means that this is an older data that you had stored and you can handle it accordingly the new data can be stored in the mongodb with the new format because there is no schema restrictions so in the new uh, documents that you are uploading there can be first name and last name and the older documents you need not change them right it will still work but that's not the case in sql or relational databases over there you need to perform alter table you need to drop one column which was name you need to introduce two more columns first name and last name and then also you need to update every row right so schema changes and when your app is really dynamic and also the data is very heterogeneous it's not making sense to have actually columns so at that point of time document model is really providing very ease for us and application code can handle that easily so this is again a summary of exactly what i have said you can have a look at it and i think i have covered everything that i wanted to uh one thing that i also want to talk about is um now as time is evolving relational and no sql world they are merging for example postgres allows you to have a data type called json in your column and you can directly store json in that so you can do all those things and we are having those support in relational world also again we are also allowing multi value data to be stored in rows um in relational world so things are changing with time and it's not very true that relational databases cannot scale horizontally another thing that i also want to mention over here is and this is something which i really like is the no sql or document databases you can say that the schema flexibility is there but these are schema on read similar to how python and javascript are and the relational world is similar to c++ or java i would say and it is schema on write 
what i mean by that is if you talk about languages like c++ right if you declare and variable as integer you can no longer st store a string in it it will just throw an error right and this is how exactly what happens when you are doing a write in a database it enforces the schema it enforces that each column should have its own data type and every entry should follow that so schema on write it's enforcing that schema on write however in nosql as we saw you can update you can insert new documents with entirely new schema however your application code is enforcing or it's assuming some kind of schema so they are not schema less it's just that they are having some schema on read your application code when it reads the information from the database it's assuming that there is some first name property it's assuming that if there is no first name property then there should be some name property right so these are schema on read and relational is having schema on write all right yeah so that's pretty much about it guys i hope this video probably gave you a lot of different perspectives to look at the relational world versus document databases in the next video i want to actually cover about how these work internally how relational databases actually store data and i just want to deep dive further into things so that we understand how things work and why is this important for us because once we know how these things work internally it actually makes us more efficient in designing better systems if you are talking about relational databases if you do not know the internals or on how indexes are created you wouldn't be able to make intelligent decisions in creating in uh, in creating a relational system which is having better performance and it can handle scalability so the next topic we will deep dive into how these things work internally and if you have any more questions drop them in the comments and i'll see you in the next one